Now, the Republican and Democratic na national conventions are still about seven plus months away, but the cities of Tampa, Florida, and Charlotte, North Carolina, are already gearing up for the crowds. And when we say gearing up, we mean that literally. Each working with a $50 million federal grant from sec for security, the cities are planning on buying new crowd control devices, bringing in thousands of borrowed cops, even passing new ordinances to make it more difficult to protest. Now, let's not forget that while there are usually protests at the conventions this year, just might be a lot bigger thanks to the Occupy movement. But is turning the cities into mini police states really the best way to prepare for the crowds? Not only does it seem overzealous, but also chilling to the First Amendment, the very values that some of these conventions are meant to represent. So let's get some more details so you know just how far, just how far authorities are planning on going. Joining me to discuss it is Rania Kalik, associate writer for Alternet. Rania, thanks so much for joining us tonight. And uh, 50 million bucks a pop from the federal government between these two cities. I guess what we should do is break them down. So why don't you first tell us how Tampa is planning on using that money? Well, um, the Tampa City Council uh, last week actually voted on how to use some of the funds in uh, the first in a series of votes that will determine what they buy. And so far, they've, they've uh, agreed to buy a $237,000 Lanco Bearcat, which is a SWAT team armored vehicle. It's like a truck. It's it's kind of like a tank for police officers. And um, uh, they've also, they're also uh, allocating about a million, uh, a little over a million dollars for to upgrade their communication system from analog to digital so that uh, the surveillance in, from helicopters above can be transmitted via a video stream to police on the ground. Um, and they're also contemplating spending another two million dollars on uh, more traffic cameras, basically, at, I think like 60 cameras uh, that would be able to monitor protesters on the ground. Um, and so that's what's come up so far in Tampa. So they're really, uh, really gearing up. Now, for a while there, though, uh, you know, it was being reported that Tampa was even trying to get two drones to do aerial surveillance for them. And then somehow they ended up dropping that. Did they drop it because people were, uh, had so many proper, I think, privacy concerns? Well, you would think um, they did want a couple drones to monitor the situation below, which is a bit overkill, but uh, it turns out they dropped it because it was unaffordable um, and, I guess, impractical. Uh, so, yeah, I'd like to think they drop it because of privacy concerns, but that wasn't the case. Uh, they also wanted, I mean, they wanted some crazy stuff at first. Their list included things like uh, riot cop helmet cameras um, and, you know, really uh, high-tech uh you know, street cameras that could, you know, see things from miles away. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, the, surveillance ca the surveillance cameras haven't passed yet. That still hasn't gone before the city council. But another thing that they're spending about two-thirds of the $50 million federal grants on is to basically pay and house and feed the between 3,000 to 4,000 additional uh, police officers from surrounding cities and um, surrounding areas of the country that are going to basically join the Tampa Police Department to help secure and police the four-day convention. So they're bringing so, thousands uh, of, uh, of people in here. Is there anything from Charlotte that you think uh, that, that also stands out that needs to be worth mentioning? Well, in Charlotte, they actually, they've been planning for a while um, how to do, how, how to prep for security. But one thing that really stands out is that the Department of Homeland Security actually offered this three-day course back in August um, to basically train the Charlotte Police Department in crowd control techniques. Um, it was kind of secretive, but some video footage was seen from it. It's basically just teaching officers how to, how to, you know, how to engage in crowd control. Um, so that was a little bit uh, interesting. But in Charlotte, things are focused a little bit more, and that's where the DNC is going to be held, in Charlotte, North Carolina. And things are focusing, officials are focusing more on trying to get these ordinances passed that would basically make it more difficult for protesters to demonstrate and would make it easier for police to arrest protesters, um, basically, you know, give them more leeway to do so without any... I mean, it would basically make illegal camping outside on city on city grounds. It would also make illegal uh, carrying certain items, like I think one of them was backpacks, but also like gas masks and chains and lumber, just some really bizarre items that you can get detained for carrying uh, over those four days. I mean, um, to, me, to me, this and, stuff sounds really uh, crazy and like overkill and completely overzealous. Uh, and at the same time, you know, is it a little ironic that we're having these 
Democratic and Republican national conventions. Uh, we're trying to, you know, use our democratic process and our political system, and yet basically what they're doing to prepare for it is passing ordinances and gearing up with uh, crowd control classes and crowd control weapons to stifle, uh, you know, our values and our free speech. You know, it's interesting because this happens, um, you know, at every convention, it seems now. Uh, you know, four years ago in St. Paul for the RNC, you know, people, I think it was nearly like a thousand people almost were arrested. And um, lawsuits took place after that. Journalists were arrested. Uh, similar situations took place in Denver at the DNC four years ago where protesters were being arrested and cordoned off in free speech zones. Um, you know, Every time these party conventions gather, it seems as though you know the, the cities, the host cities, take it upon themselves to basically fortify the city um, to shield these policy makers and important people that gather uh, from from protesters, from, <laughs> from, uh, from their own uh, fellow citizens. I guess you could say. I mean, yeah. do you think that this year, that this time around, we're going to see even more protesters? Uh, that it's going to be you know a much larger uh, group of people outside, thanks to the Occupy movement. Um, you know, I think so, and um, I also think it's really interesting that um, I spoke to one uh, councilwoman from from Tampa, who was talking to me about these uh, this equipment that they're purchasing, and she actually even said that she believes that, that you know as much as she respects the Tampa police, she she feels that they're actually using the Tampa Occupy movement, which is pretty small, as sort of like a training ground for preparing for the RNC. Um, so yeah, I do think that Occupy is definitely going to make a difference. Uh, I, I think there's, the protests will probably be larger and, um, I don't know, maybe even more well organized, but, you know, it's also allowing, at least in Tampa, police to practice these techniques, I guess, <laughs> to gear, you know, to prepare. It's, it's very odd and strange. Yeah, I mean, it's odd and I think that it's, uh, you know, scary if you look at, around at the way that we saw so many of the police use their force and their tools and whatever else they had, uh, you know, to go after Occupy protesters throughout the last year. Now, at the same time, let me just ask you one more question here is, $50 million uh, isn't really cheap in a federal grant, right? Now, we're talking about $100 million that they've given. And at this moment, we have so many financial crises in almost every single state in the United States, right? Uh, for a federal program, that's also a lot of money that's being given to it. Do you think that our priorities are in the right place while social programs are being cut and you get $100 million for security and ta I mean, tanks in not. Tampa, Florida? <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. I mean, fifty million dollars. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not a grand amount of money in the grand scheme of things. But at the same time, it's a good chunk of money to be spending on secure, you know, securing a perimeter for these huge conventions that are pretty much just, you know, uh, big media advertisements for four days. Um, it, it's also interesting because in Tampa, they recently passed a panhandling law to kind of, you know, uh, get rid of the homeless population on the streets. Um, so. And in, in one of the councilwomen I spoke to actually tried to suggest that some of this grant money be spent on social services for housing the homeless because the panhandling law that was passed was lobbied for heavily by business interests who are looking to make some money off of the RNC coming into Tampa. Um, but of course the mayor was completely against that. But yeah, it's interesting that this is what we're spending our money on when people are really struggling right now to basically you know, secure this big party, <laughs> uh, these big conventions for, yeah. for policy makers. All in the yeah. name of, uh, of security, I guess, is, you know, just the way that they do it this time around. But definitely sounds like they're gearing up for these conventions. Ronnie, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me.